shooting against backlight can be very tricky. And what you see here is a shot from a sunset on a Spanish island. I think the sunset is captured beautifully. Beautiful colors, beautiful light. The ocean is just in the way I wanted to have it. But everything else on that image is dark. And that's not what I wanted to have. If I get a little more light into the shadows, which is the second frame here, then the sunset is completely overexposed. And there is one technique I'm briefly showing and illustrating by means of the Leica SL2, but works with any other DSLM and DSLR out there in the market to overcome the problems with backlight. Let's get started. Exposure bracketing means composing several images with different shooting parameters when it comes to light. And the way you access this on the Leica SL2 and is also typically easily accessible in any other DSLM and DSLR in the market, you go to the menu button here, you come to the status screen and then there is drive mode. And drive mode has single shooting, has continuous shooting with low speed, medium speed, high speed, very high speed, you have the self timer and counter, 2 seconds, 12 seconds. You have interval shooting for time lapses and at the very right hand side of the status screen menu for drive mode, you have exposure bracketing. And then if you hit the shutter button again, you're good to go and shoot a series of images with different exposure parameters and later on compose them into post-processing, for instance in Photoshop, into one single frame. Accessing the settings for exposure bracketing is also easy. On the Leica SL2 you push the menu button and you push it again to come to the first page of the main menu. In some cases and if you customize the camera there will be a favorites page between the status screen and the first regular page of the menu of the camera and that depends on how you set up the camera. I typically have that favorites page, I removed it here for the sake of demonstration so that people can follow. And the first entry on the first regular menu page is drive mode. And if you go into that, you have all the options I showed before from single over continuous shooting to self timer, two seconds, 12 seconds, interval shooting for time lapse and exposure bracketing. And if we now move the joystick to the right hand side, we come into the settings. And there are three options you have here, the number of frames, the EV steps and exposure compensation. The number of frames, let's start with it. And there is a graphical illustration down here which shows you what's happening. You have uh, the option to toggle between three frames or five frames. You see it here, now you have five, here you have three. And that graphical illustration helps you to understand what's going on here. And you have only those two options, three or five, and depending on the lightning conditions and how the backlight is in the scene you want to shoot, you can go for three or five frames. The second option is the EV steps and actually on the EV steps, let's push the joystick to get into it. You can actually, and you see it here, narrow it down to one third steps. So this is three frames now where you have the regular exposure, you have one third of an EV underexposure and one third of an EV overexposure. You can go up to two third, then this spreads out a bit more widely. You can go to full EV stops. And uh, if you now go back up again to the number of frames and you change this from three to five, the illustration here changes accordingly and you get five frames with a distance of one EV between the frames. So here we have your regular exposure. Here we have one EV underexposure, two EVs underexposure, one EV overexposure, two EVs overexposure. And then you can compose them later on in Photoshop or in any post-processing software to combine it into one single frame and in this way overcome the problem of backlight. We also have here the option to go up, let's go back to three here, to actually push this further out and watch the illustration here. So this is one and one third and so on up to two full EV stops and then you can go up to three full EV stops, then it ends no matter how hard you push the joystick to the right hand side, it ends here. But if you go up to five frames, it pushes it even further out to minus six full EVs under exposure and plus six full EVs over exposure. So now you have five frames and you have a full range with, you know, a widely spread exposure situation here. 
which you can combine into one single frame in Photoshop as I'm going to illustrate later on. And by the way, depending on what shooting mode you're in, I'm here in manual mode, but I can also go to aperture priority, shutter speed priority or program mode. Depending on what mode you have chosen here, the camera uses different techniques to achieve that underexposure and overexposure. For instance, if you wanna fix your aperture, you need to be in aperture priority, and then it uses, for instance, exposure time, means shutter speed, or if you keep it variable, the ISO value, to tweak uh, the under and over exposure. And I'm going to show this later in my sample from the sunset, from the intro video, how I achieved that and how I achieved the best result. The last thing I wanted to show in the menu here, let's go back to the drive mode, exposure bracketing. I didn't explain yet the exposure compensation. Let's go back for the time being to three frames. And let's go back here to one full EV stop. So here we go. Now this one here is shifting the whole EV line to the right hand side means overexposing or to the left hand side means underexposing. So if I push the joystick again, I can now watch the illustration here, shift this whole thing towards overexposure or towards underexposure. And that might also be a helpful tweak in certain shooting conditions. So in my sunset example, I was shooting with aperture priority. I had the ISO fixed at 100 and I used exposure bracketing with one EV and five frames. So here are the five frames coming out of the exposure bracketing and I also copied in the metadata here. And uh, first of all, you see in all, let's zoom this in a little bit. You see in all five frames here, I was on aperture priority. Pretty simple. And uh, the aperture I chose was F4. So that's the same on all five frames here. You see it here across the horizontal axis, F number is four. You also see here that I did shoot with the Aposumicron 4DSL series with the widest open aperture of f2 and 35 millimeter focal length. And uh, there is one parameter in the metadata here which you can use as an orientation for exposure bracketing. First of all, this here was the shot I showed at the very beginning of my video in the intro. And you see here, this is an exposure bias value of zero. And then one EVF underexposed has an exposure bias value of minus one. And you see here the difference. The colors are a bit more popping here. So this went down here in one exposure value. And then the last one here is even darker here on the sunset and it has an exposure bias value of minus two. So how did the uh, camera achieved that. And by the way, let's briefly look at the other two images here beside my level metered uh, standard shot here. So here we have an exposure bias value of one. You clearly see this is more bright than the base image here. And then it gets even brighter and we get more light into the shadows, but the sunset is overexposed, which is the other image I showed at the beginning of the intro. And here the exposure bias value is two. Now, how did the camera achieve that? First of all, in the base image here, which has an exposure bias value of zero and an aperture of f4, ISO value fixed, by the way, as I said, to 100 for all five frames, we had an exposure time of one over 250 seconds. The next one, which is one EV down, is one over 500, which is twice as fast as one over 250 of a second. So that makes sense. And then it goes to one over 1000 seconds here, for an exposure bias value of minus two. And the same works in the other direction. Here we have one over 125, which is twice as long as before. And then we go down again, 125 divided by two is roughly 160, which is the full stop here on the exposure time and exposure bias value of two. So that all makes sense. In this way, these images have been taken as a series of five frames. And now I'm going to show briefly in Lightroom and in Photoshop how to compose these five frames into one single frame. First of all, let's select the five raw images from the exposure bracketing shooting. Let's move them into Lightroom. 
and then you see a preview in little thumbnails of those images and then hit import and then these images will be imported into Lightroom and you get slightly bigger thumbnails. Then if you don't know where to find what you want to do is type merge into help and you will get the menu entry which is called HDR under photo merge. And uh, so in this way it's easy for you to find it if you don't know where it is. Merge is the keyword, HDR is the menu entry and then the composition of the images starts and these frames will be composed into one image. Lightroom gives you a few options to remove ghosting and ghosting can actually come from artifacts if these five frames from exposure bracketing do not perfectly match and uh, I'm going into a zoom here and checking for ghosting but there is no ghosting visible to me and the colors and everything here is just popping and looks very nice so that looks all good so let's make that choice and then we get a sixth image in the library which is the HDR image from the composition of these five frames. So I'm going into develop now for a last check if everything is to my liking and also to see if I want to do some post-processing adjustments here. But if I zoom in and look at the details here in the formerly completely dark shadows, it looks pretty nice. No ghosting effects, no artifacts, nothing which could distract me from the beauty of that lightning scene here from the sunset. And also on the horizon, if you look at the sunset, pretty nice. Structure of the clouds, pretty nice. It's all to my liking, so I think I can live with that image in the way it was composed. So I export it in the way I exported images before in Lightroom and the job is done. So for the sake of completeness, let's briefly look into the workflow in Photoshop. And it's kind of the same. You go to Automate and Photo Merge and then in Photo Merge you take the browser and select the raw images you want to have, which are those five frames we saw before in Lightroom. We select them, we choose them and import them into Photoshop. And uh, then actually a processing starts for a while, which can take a few minutes depending on the power of your computer. And then you get the composed image. So it's uploading those now. In the middle on the, let's say right hand side, you will see the different layers in Photoshop being composed into one common layer and then the image is basically processed in the way you wanted to have it. There are different settings and ways you can adjust and tweak that final HDR Pro image here and I typically choose equalize histograms because that nicely balances light between the different frames in the exposure bracketing. So let's process this and then we get an image comparable to what we saw before in Lightroom just processed in Photoshop and I think in the same way it looks nice and we have a good balance between underexposure and overexposure coming from those five bracketing frames. Let's just do a little wrap up. So first of all HDR stands for high dynamic range and it's a technique people use in photography to get in particular crisp and popping images. And it's typically done by composing different frames into one single frame. And what I've demonstrated in this video, it's also a very effective weapon against backlight problems. And in order to get that sunset popping with the right colors, with the right warm and yellow orange colors on the sky, I needed to compose several frames into one single frame to get light into the shadows because they were completely underexposed when the sunset was correctly exposed. That's what we did and demonstrated here. You can use different tools for that. You can use different cameras. Exposure bracketing is working on a lot of modern DSLMs and DSLRs. And whether you use Lightroom or Photoshop is a matter of taste. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and peace out.